welcome to this video which talks about your second field placement experience for the spring of 2021. So in FE2, what happens? This one's going to talk about when you teach, what you teach, some do's and don'ts, and of course your new best friend which is the ISA website. Speaking of which, stop! Before you go any further, stop this video and take some time to look through the ISA website on student teaching. This is really important because you're going to find all the information you could ever want or need about the field placement experiences, including dates, how you're placed at the school, what opportunities there are for field placement, including things like uh, possibilities in Indigenous communities and eventually overseas, how to manage your online placement, um, how the mentoring team which are your, your cooperating teacher and your supervisor are meant to work together to support and evaluate you. The student handbook, which is going to tell you about all the forms you need to fill in, when to send them, who to send them, etc. The handbook also includes important policies about things like what happens if the school closes during your field placement, what to do if you get sick, how to handle field trips, um, all those kind of crazy wonderful things that you're going to want to know, you can find in the student teaching handbook and policies. So here's your treasure hunt. <laughs> Go onto the ISA website and find the assessment forms for this field placement, especially the ones for week one and week three. I also want you to find the code of ethics. Look for where to download your student teaching profile. I don't know if this is still available, but maybe there's the welcome letter for your CT. And I want you to find the schedule for your workload and assessment during this field experience. If you're in my group, um, I'm going to ask you to do a participation activity, which is create a quiz question. We're going to play a little game in the first class. So your assignment is to write a question testing information about the field placement you think it would be pertinent for your friends to know. Please do this in a multiple choice format. So four choices, A, B, C, and D, and make sure you provide the correct answer the please yeah so when you're done that you can share your question by uploading it to the assignment section of my course here's an example um, when do you need to get your judicial criminal record verified okay if you're not in my in my section don't worry about it your your <laughs> your instructor may not want you to do that but for my students go for it okay dates for the fe2 so you can see this is the one for TESOL um, for ISA. Go check on the ISA website, but I think it's fairly similar for everybody. For, so for field experience number two this year and the professional seminar number two, you can see that the field experience runs from Monday to Friday, starting May 10th and finishing May 28th. Um, we meet once a week on Monday or Wednesday. Um, my group, we're meeting on Wednesdays, so it's all set. You need to check that with your course instructor and on the website. Yeah, and sorry, the professional seminar runs from May 10th to May 26th. Just a reminder that you have the third field experience coming up very quickly after you finish this one. So keep in mind, don't go anywhere <laughs> um, too far over the summer because look, you start Monday, August 30th. Woohoo! Um, so the end of summer, you need to be around and ready and um, excited. This is the big one. This goes from the end of August to the beginning of December. So it's a full 12 weeks. Okay. Um, here's what happens week by week. And this is, again, a really um, helpful place to go. You can see, again, it's the ISA, the Teaching eHandbook. Okay, so you can uh, get that link. This is what happens. So. Before you start, and this is your placement preparation, here's the things you need to do. You need to review the teaching handbook, take note um, of the person you need to contact if there's an issue, check out where you're going, the school address, um, reach out to your supervisor, reach out to your CT. Um, if you can, chat with the CT about what grades they're teaching, kind of what themes they're doing, ask them about the materials that they're using, you know, all of these really important questions. Um, if you can, go on to the school's website, figure out what the flavor of the school is. Some are kind of more arts-based, some are really heavy into sports. 
some are international schools it's really good to know who who and what you're, you're sort of going into this one's pretty important make sure that you know how much time it takes to travel to your school um, how are you going to get there are you going to go with public transit is someone going to drive you are you going to drive yourself where's the parking you don't want to start on your first day and be caught in traffic or um, think it's going to take 30 minutes when it actually takes an hour or more check with your um, seminar instructor so how much assessment so what kind of thing oh sorry check with your on isa what kind of things you're going to be assessed on in fe2 go back and look at the action plan from fe1 way back then if you can't find it in your own files you can probably go back into my courses and download whatever you submitted there begin thinking about um, what you want to do for fe2 the kind of things that you want to build on what is it that you want to work on as a teacher this time remember that you're not observing this is your chance to get your hands dirty with the kids you're going to start teaching so that's pretty exciting the very first thing you're going to be asked to do um, when you meet with your cooperating teacher and your supervisor is to discuss your action plan they're going to be expecting you to tell them what it is you think are some of your areas that you're really strong in and areas you want to really work on and improve finally make sure you complete your student teaching profile you're going to share this with your field supervisor and cooperating teacher and this is just kind of a really efficient way to get them to know who you are the kind of person that you are okay so week one you can see i've highlighted some important things here um, week one is kind of you're getting your feet wet Okay. You're going to spend the first couple of days really um, shadowing and observing the CT. Again, as I mentioned, you're going to give them your action plan and ask them um, and let them know what it is that you're working on. Um, in your first week, you're going to discuss what kind of small group activities you're working on. Um, so the idea in the first week is that you are first of all observing and then starting to work in small groups so if the kids are working in pairs or in small teams that you're circulating around you're going to create an activity plan um, that really just gets the kids to work in small groups so one activity and you're really assisting so that's the ideal thing here at the end of the first week so in the first week you have your introductory meeting that's when you're going to talk about your action plan and your cooperating teacher and supervisor will complete their week one report so it's not really a kind of grade that's a, that's here it's essentially are you showing up are you being professional or are you doing the things that you're supposed to be doing okay all right now we get into week two in week two you, um, based on the planning you did in week one, you're definitely moving into doing a bit more of the teaching, especially in small groups of students. Okay. Um, by the end of the field placement, really you should ideally be team teaching a lesson with your cooperating teacher or maybe with someone you've been placed with. In week two, you're going to need to discuss which lesson you'll team teach when the supervisor visits, and you're going to need to write this lesson plan up. Um, you should find lots of templates and models on my courses, especially your professional seminar instructors, will make sure you get that. So the objective for this field placement is really working with small groups and then moving towards co-teaching. You can see this, right? In week three, we're collaboratively planning a, a full class lesson, which you're supposed to be co-teaching. However, some CTs may give you more opportunities to teach the whole group on your own in this field placement and others might struggle with letting go control of their class, even for co-teaching. Even other CTs, and I've seen all different kinds, think co-teaching means splitting the lessons 50-50. So they take a class, you take a class. There's a wide range of interpretations for how to co-teach out there. So the best thing you can do is really politely explain to your CT what McGill wants you to do during this field experience. You can also take advantage of the meeting with the supervisor to make sure that that's clear. Um, use the information from the ISA to support you. That helps. Ask your CT what they feel comfortable doing. Explain what you feel comfortable doing. And this is kind of where you negotiate the teaching load, the transition with your CT. 
Finally, you need to accept that in the end, you may have to compromise if your visions aren't the same. Your CT is welcoming you into their classroom and essentially you've got to follow their rules at the end of the day. If there's real issues, however, make sure that you let your supervisor know immediately. Okay, that's their job. Their role is to help you negotiate the relationship with your CT. You'll notice here I've circled this, the formative assessment. So week two, you get your first formative assessment and the cooperating teacher and supervisor complete this on their own. Okay, in week three, yay, this is your final week and it will come super quickly. So the goal here is to team teach a full class lesson, either with the CT or the person you're placed with. Um, in week three, you're also thinking ahead to your action plan. Remember how quickly the next field placement comes? So you're going to think about, okay, now for the last three weeks, it's been really, really quick, but also really rich. You've learned quite a few things. So what is it that you want to improve on for your next field placement? You're going to see that there's a couple of um, things to, that are assessed this week. So we have formative assessment too. The cooperating teacher can be, and, and supervisor can do this with together, or they can do it separately. And together, the cooperating teacher and supervisor are going to complete the summative assessment. So there's a form, second formative assessment, usually done at the beginning, and summative assessment at the end. Okay, the summative assessment should not be submitted until after the last day in the field. Okay, and again, um, the FE2 action plan to be prepared and submitted. And you're going to give that into your seminar instructor. Okay. So just a reminder, since you're watching this video now, you have quite a few things to do before next week when you begin. The first one is to locate your action plan from FE1 and remind yourself what it is that you wanted to work on. You also need to fill in and print out your student teacher profile, getting that ready to give to your cooperating teacher and your supervisor. And third, you want to reach out to your CT and supervisor if they haven't already contacted you. Introduce yourself, prepare some questions, maybe share your action plan in your profile if you want to attach that as an email in your introduction. Get the ball started. Okay, finally, the really quick cap on professionalism. So that's our competency 13. You're all bright and thoughtful and motivated future teachers, so just make sure your manners reflect your excellent professionalism. A reminder that McGill is not like other universities. We do hold ourselves to a pretty high standard, including asking you to follow a dress code, even if the teachers you're working with tend to kind of look on this end of the spectrum here, being pretty casual. We ask you to go kind of more along here to the smart casual to business casual. And it's not just that you're, you need to look professional, it's also keep in mind that you are much younger than most of your cooperating teachers and much, and you're actually a lot closer in age to your students. You're gonna find that dressing up a little bit will really help, first of all, distinguish the diff you from your students. It'll help you to consolidate your sort of teacher identity in the classroom. And believe it or not, your classroom students will really appreciate it. They really enjoy having a teacher that kind of respects them enough and respects their job enough to dress up a little bit. It'll help establish your authority. So don't stress too, too much about your wardrobe, but do keep in mind that we are aiming for kind of this. Or if you prefer this kind of clothing, then kind of here. So longer skirts, professional looking. Okay. Business casual to smart casual. You don't quite need to go quite this far. Remember, finally, you're on a field placement, but also on an ongoing job interview. And if you want substitute teaching gigs, which pay really well and give you lots of great experience, look professional and take the opportunity to introduce yourself to other members of the staff while you're there, especially the secretary. Um, another aspect of professionalism is to use your best French with the other teachers and staff. This is really important in a French school. Keep in mind that um, language is a highly political issue and they're sensitive to English language use. Finally, be on time. And by on time, we mean 30 minutes before class begins or sooner if your CT gets there sooner. Okay, so if your school starts at 8.30, 8 o'clock is on time. 
at the latest. Smile, be polite, offer to help whenever you can, um, and avoid using your cell phone. Yeah, be very, very discreet if you do. These are things that have often caused problems in the past. Hopefully we'll get a chance to go over some more do's and don'ts in your online class. Okay, um, so that's it for this video. Be sure to scour the ISA website and bring your questions about the course and the field experience to our first meeting. And finally, at McGill, we are here to help you get the most out of your field experience. It's exciting, terrifying, and wonderful all at once. So be your best, be proud, and remember that you're in the first of a series of extended job interviews. So be memorable for great reason. That's it. Thank you.